Good morning. We'd like to welcome everyone to uh, St. Mark's. I'm Pastor Ken. Uh, I have several announcements to, this morning. Uh, it's Native American um, Ministries and also Earth Day we'll be celebrating today. Uh, the older flowers are presented by Heidi Janikowskis in honor of grandparents. Uh, also, the flower chart, there are two openings towards the end of May. So if anyone would like to have flowers for the end of May, you can do that. Uh, also, uh, the Broomall Fire Company will be holding their annual car carnival on April 28th through the 30th, and there's an announcement about that carnival. Also, this coming week, our secretary, Melissa, will be going to Ireland for four days with her husband. He's going to a workshop in Ireland, so uh, she'll be in Monday and Tuesday, and I, I don't know about Wednesday morning, but we're trying not to overwhelm her because she's trying to get ahead with the bulletin, so she, uh, she'll be going there. Uh, also, an update on the prayer list. Uh, we want to be in prayer for uh, Linda's brother. Um, his cancer that he had has returned, and he's in Yale Hospital at Yale University getting chemo for uh, five days. So we're in prayer for him. Also, his wife, um, she beat breast cancer, but it's been 10 operations for reconstruction, and it's just not going well there. Uh, also, Linda had two procedures this week. She's fine, but uh, she's recovering from those. So it's been a, a pretty rough week this, this past week. Uh, also, Nancy Holt, Dr. Nancy Holt, Presbyterian pastor, her husband passed away this, this week and the funeral was yesterday at Presbyterian Church in Lansdale, uh, Lansdale where she uh, was a pastor for several years. Um, also, our middle hen is 92, okay? So we'll make that change. And also, we're not having communion today or <laughs> things. It's been kind of crazy. And the sky is falling. <laughs> and the, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Well, it looks like a pretty rough week this week, too. So um, anyway, we'll get through it. You know, that, those things happen. But now we're going to have an announcement about Earth Day and Native American Sunday. I'd like to read to you something from the Upper Room from 2019, written by Mark Hart. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. To me, the Pacific Northwest is one of the most beautiful places in the United States. When I look at the green and varied landscape, it's easy to see only God could have made all this. But at the same time, we don't have to look far in any direction to see the scars that we have put on this paradise. In such a vast area, it is easy to feel small and powerless to change anything. However, like any other home, God's creation looks better when it's clean. If I am a good caretaker of my world, I will eventually have no world worth taking care of. After all, if I wreck my house, where will I go to live? In order to take care of the home that God built for me, I try to live a life focused on cleaning up our world, recycling, using public transportation, and supporting environmental causes. Maybe small steps, but they are small steps towards a solution. If my example encourages others to do the same, then small steps can become larger strides. Although we may feel powerless to protect our world, if we take small steps, the home God gave us can remain clean and beautiful as it was designed. At this time, we'll have
So the children would like to come forward. Today as we come to uh, worship, there's two things we're remembering. Native American uh, Sunday for the Indians, and also Earth Day. And a couple weeks ago, I know you were studying creation, and in our Bible this morning, it says, in the beginning, it's only God. God made the whole world. God made water and sky. He made flowers and trees. He put the sun in the sky. He made fish and birds. Everything was born. Now, I want you to look at the pictures. What do you see? What do you see? Zebras. You see a lot of animals? I see flamingos. Flamingo? You see God? Okay. That's right. You see anything? Flowers. Flowers? Great. Kevin? <laughs> A little froggy. Okay. Well, you know, this morning uh, when I came in, I heard a woodpecker, and I was sitting here, and it's outside there, and it's like, you know, making a sound. But a really great thing happened this week. As I was coming to church early in the morning, I looked out in the backyard, and guess what I saw? A white deer. Beautiful white deer. I yeah, and so the deer was there and was just chilling out, eating the grass and looking around. It was looking at me. And I'm, yeah, I'm like, yes, oh. And a beautiful white deer was a female, and um, I'm looking at the deer, didn't run away. So I went home and I said uh, to my wife, well, look up on the internet the mythology of a white deer. And from Indian culture, Native American, uh, when you see a white deer, it's a sign of prophecy that good things are going to happen. And boy, do we need that. <laughs> and good things happen. So it's a beautiful white deer. Yes, what do you want to say? It did look like Bambi. It was kind of, uh, it wasn't a baby deer and it wasn't a full adult deer yet. It was like a teenager. A teenager. <laughs> yeah. It was a teenage deer. The color was really beautiful. So anyway, I wanted to mention that. I would like to see it at the zoo. Like to see it at the zoo? And also, we want to uh, remember um, Native American Sunday, you know, today. And so that's very important that we, uh, and the fact that the introit was a song written by the Indian Native American uh, community for our opening introit. So, um, anyway, I'd like to have prayer with you, and today is a very special day for those two things. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for our children, we pray for Earth Day, a Native American uh, Indian Sunday, and we lift up this day in Christ's name. Amen. And also, bless our children as they learn about Christ. Amen. Thank you. All right, great. Really like that. Okay, so you can go to Sunday school now. Okay. If you will stand and join in a responsive call to worship. He was turned in by a greedy turncoat. He was a turn by a religious authority. He was deserted by all the disciples. He was, he was suspected by the military of treason. He was jeered by a thief. He, he was rejected by the very principles. He was executed by the civil authorities. But, but today, today he is worshipped as our Lord and Savior. Our first hymn is How Great Thou Art on page 77.
If we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. Let us go into prayer. As we go into prayer, we lift up our prayer page for Lois, for June, for Rosemary, for Betsy, for Gail, for Dot, for Kathleen, and me, and Frank, for Jim, and Phoenix, and Dot Sothery, and Marge, and Lisa, for Alice, and Corinne, and Mary Lou, Eula, and Maxwell, Andy, Jackson, Sandy, Cheryl, Davey, Otis, Valerie, George, Hugo, Shannon, Carter, Bryce, James, George, and the family of Megan Royer, for Stephen and for Ray, and for Linda. Let us continue in silent prayer. Our 
Our Heavenly Father, our prayers are so very, very important. But also for all those people on our prayer page, there is so much healing that needs to occur. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we will touch these individuals as we lift them up in prayer. And now also accept our prayers, our individual prayers, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the ministry of Lisa. so 